Burnley have spent £100 million. In case you forgot. I'm having a mental breakdown, okay? So, basically, I was going to do a video about a team that begins with B and ends in Zil. Take a good guess. I was doing this video and I was editing it and I was thinking, no one wants to watch this. My last one, two, three, four, five videos that I've done have all had the same comments about 50 times saying, so how are Burnley doing? Well, at least they aren't as bad as Burnley. I'm not okay. Let's, let's go into it. The reason why I'm doing this video is for three reasons. Number one, uh, I, I'm annoyed of you guys to keep talking about it, so I'm going to give it to you, okay? Number two is a recap of the last month and really what is going to happen to Vincent Company and my thoughts on it. Tell me your thoughts down below. And number three, to hopefully jinx the ever-loving life out of our next game. Who, um, who's, uh, who is it? Sheffield United. If we don't win this game... Even thinking about not winning this game gives me genuine, genuine and aneurysms. Burnley have lost seven games in a row. Again, Burnley have lost seven games of professional football in a row. One win in the league in 13, actually. Let me check. Oh, it is 13. Sorry, I thought it was 14. It's not as bad as I thought. That's going to be clipped when we lose this weekend, isn't it? Now, in the Premier League, you may say, yeah, but you may have had a tough run of games. Like, we did have a tough start to the season, and I think that's a massive reason why we're here right now. As we are quite a young team, and I think that completely destroyed pretty much all our confidence. Thanks, Premier League. But to know, I would name our seven losses in a row. Chelsea, okay, at home. 4-1, Brentford away, 3-0, Bournemouth away, 2-1, Everton away, 3-0, Palace at home, 2-0, Arsenal away, 3-1, West Ham at home, 2-1. So, West Ham, Palace, Everton, Bournemouth and Brentford. To be a team that's even considered respectful in this league, you've got to at least win one. At least get a point. We've lost each one. Half of them in embarrassing fashion and another way in another different type of embarrassing fashion. My last video was done against Bournemouth, I believe, or Brentford. One of the, I don't care. They all kind of blew into one, like, one condensed, like, ball of depression. And by the way, I'm sorry. This video will be very differently edited because, simply put... I can't be bothered. <laughs> I, I honestly, I can't be. Honest. And you may probably find it much more entertaining about just seeing me go mental. Anyway, this is my therapy. That's kind of what I'm using this for. Oh yeah, as well. One thing. Um, these things. This thing. My company. My work. My everything. Okay. Um, thank you for the love on Black Friday. And for this video, I would do twenty percent for just my YouTube people, and I would do called um Burnley for twenty percent off. For the next two to three days or so. Um, this is our messy one, which I did literally last week. I love it. I think it looks great. Honestly, I'm really proud of it, really. Um, the only thing that I'm proud of in my life right now, other than, you know, my kids. Oh, God. Please don't show my wife that. Oh, God, wait. No, there's going to be someone on Twitter saying, your visa bingo. Ding, ding, ding. He's t he said all the words. All he now needs to say is, oh, he lives in Poland. And ding, ding, ding. I'm having a mental breakdown, okay? I I it's not good. When I say that I'm looking forward to the championship, people think that I'm just coping here. But no, genuinely, I can't fucking wait. I cannot wait to get back in the championship. At this stage, I want to just go down already. Like, just send us down now. I would rather play Rotherham right now than... I forgot who... Yeah, Sheffield United. Which, that might as well be in a championship anyway. Even if we win against Sheffield United, can I even be happy? Like, do I... Should I even have any hope? Luton have double the points. They've spent five quid. We've spent a hundred million pounds... 80% of that is on wingers, and we don't can play them. No, I'm sorry. Okay, so I was quite hopeful, of course. You've probably seen the tweet. I did a tweet back in, I think, literally just when we won the league. So I was really high and excited about the next season. And I said that we'd be more likely to be in the top 10 than we would be in a relegation battle. I didn't say we would be in the top 10. People can't. Read. But anyway, it, it's still an awful shout nonetheless. Yeah, I said that uh, we'd be more likely to be fighting. So yeah, I said we'd be more likely to be in the top 10 than in a relegation battle. 
I predicted 14th still. Like, that was my actual prediction. And like most people, may I say. So don't have a go at me. Most of you probably thought we'd be 14th, 15th, 16th. Someone even said 9th. So, yeah. So what's actually happened is, so um, I've kind of already done a video on it. So watch that because I won't just go through it all again. But um, to kind of go into what's kind of happened since then, as there been hope, there has been it's actually been better games or better performances. Some edits to the system has been made. And we've actually lost in more depressing ways. Like, come on, if you lose, all right? If you lose, but, like, you play really badly or, like, you just are just really just not at the same level, then you can kind of stomach it. You can be like, yeah, okay, we're just awful. We're just bad. We're just, you know, you can kind of stomach it. You can kind of, you can recognize it and process it and think, okay, you know what? That makes sense to me. But when you are actually, like, dominating a game possession-wise, whatever the hell that means, kind of having more kind of control in the game and looking like you should be the better team, but yet you still lose to Palace and West Ham at home, then it's at a stage that it actually becomes more annoying and actually more angry and actually more sad. I've entered the if you don't laugh, you cry stage and I'm not laughing. I've already checked out in terms of this season. I've checked out. I Unless if we win three games in a row, I don't care. And that sounds bad. Maybe that does, but that's genuinely where I'm at. Like, I love Vincent Company and that's what I'm going to go to right now. What's happening with Vincent Company? Tell me down below, do you think I am mental? By the way, <laughs> FYI, Derby County in their Derby County season of the Derby County of 11 points had more points than what Burnley have right now at this stage. Also, FYI, fun, fun, fun fact here, Everton have been deducted 10 points and are still above us. And like, if this was like, you know, um, Fulham or someone like that. It'd be like, oh, they're a decent team right now. But Everton! So yeah, if you think I'm mental, tell me down below. I don't want company sacked. And I double down on that and say that I wouldn't really sack him no matter what. With a slight caveat of unless if we're looking like we actually are hitting that derby breaking point. Um, I, I, you know, like... Unless if we are losing 15, 20 games in a row. Like, this is where I'm at. Like, I don't want to go into the kind of grayness, nothingness of that limbo of not knowing what's next when we've kind of been full, full on on this new path with Vincent Company. Expansive passing football and, like, that's something that we've not been used to and we've fully committed. We've backed him. We've got a ton of players, new players. That's that's all is players. If Vincent Company leaves, what happens to them? Would he even care? Would he want to leave? Potentially. So, if we sack him, who are we going to bring in? It has to be someone good with experience who costs money. There's not too many like that right now. And no, we're not bringing in Big Sam. And I swear to God, if you say, like, Steve Bruce I will block you off my channel. The only name I've heard that is somewhat I can think is realistic is, um, I can't say his name, uh, Lopetsky, who was the Wolves manager last year, that I think kind of plays much more of a sort of proactive style of football um, and apparently wants to be back in his kind of ready to be back in the Premier League. So maybe he'll get, take a chance. But that's like the only name that I can think maybe. But even still, the guy was, like, at Sevilla before. So, like, that's still a big risk to take us on right now, and I couldn't predict him. But even still, I, I kind of don't want that because the issue is it's not like we're just kind of just doing nothing. Like, we have an identity. We've got a philosophy. Right now, it may not be working, but I'd rather kind of still dream of that working in the future than to kind of just completely write it off immediately. I, I don't think that's how we should be. I don't think football should be like that. Of course, football is that nowadays. Of course, football is more about the sacking a manager instantly to get hopefully short-term success and to ignore any sort of actual philosophy or identity to the club. Football, of course, nowadays is just all about the non-stop success now. And that, there's a reason for that because of how much money is on the line to be in the Premier League especially when we spent this much money. So that does ask some questions. If company's still here in January, which I think he will be, I think we, we all know he'll still be, 
will you give him more money to try to save this? Or are we going to just kind of just take a, a foot off the gas and say, okay, we, th we may have completely messed up this window and we've kind of ruined our chances of staying up. Let's not waste more money to put more risk into next year and potentially have that for next season in a championship. So kind of just take a foot off the gas and say, okay, we're regrouping rebuild in the summer and then we can just bounce back up again in championship. Because right now I'm looking at Leeds, I'm looking at Southampton, I'm looking at Leicester. I'm jealous because that's what we had. I was speaking to Ellis Platt in away days. You know who he is. He's a massive Leeds fan, right? And last year when we were having so much fun and, of course, Leeds were doing really poorly, we were going back and forth about how the fact that he cannot wait to go down because it looks like it's so much fun. And I said, I don't want to go up. I, I, I wish we didn't go up. If there was a way that you could win the league in a championship and still stay there, please. And that is, of course, due to our current predicament. I get that right. And if we were winning games and performing, then... I would think differently, but right now, I hate it. So I'm going to calm down here, eventually, finally, right? Do you think I'm crazy for wanting to stick with Vincent Company because of maybe it's an affinity to him, maybe it's because we actually still have an identity. It may not be working, but there is something there. Like, we are, he is tweaking the system. We have made changes to the system and the way that we play, and it has been working it's just that I just don't think the players that we have right now are ready or just good enough. Some are good, but just are inexperienced and young. Some are just not good enough. It's a mixture, right? And th that that's why I feel like he's the reason why we are here because he bought these players in. So that is his that is his problem. That is his fault. However, end of the day, these players are here now, so we've got to deal with what we have. So if you get rid of him, then who comes in? And I just feel like. I'd rather go down with him and hopefully, you know, try to bounce back up again, kind of rebuild, learn, move on, because I think that he is the right man. Don't forget what happened in the summer. Don't forget all these links to Chelsea and then to Spurs and then to the Belgium national team job and how happy you was. Like, if you're a Burnley fan, don't forget how happy you were when you found out that company signed a new five-year deal. That was seen as the biggest deal to Burnley in the entirety of the window, potentially in the entire last you know, year or so since we brought in company in the first place, right? That was huge. Don't just throw that away for kind of short-term, maybe success that's not even guaranteed, that you don't even know what your actual plan is because you... When I say, okay, you want to start company to bring in who? Anyone, anyone would be out in the company. Okay, man, that, that's petulant as hell. Because that you're not actually thinking. Like, yes, right now it's, it, it, it sucks right now. I'm not going to pretend that it's good. We're, like, we've got four points in 13 games. We've won one game in our first 13 against Luton that we probably shouldn't have won. Like, if Brun Larson didn't just say screw it and just hit it randomly straight after the kickoff because we we just conceded and almost passed the game then then we probably would have lost that game too so in the grand scheme of things it's been a disastrous year but i think it'll get even worse if we sat company maybe i'm scared maybe i'm delusional you tell me maybe you think that i'm just way too committed to him and that you think that i have no idea what i'm on about and that, you know, maybe you've been at this situation at your club, you think, well, is the, is the alternative any better than what we have right now? That's kind of where I'm at. So I don't think companies should be sacked. And I don't think he will be sacked even if we go down with, I don't know, the 20 odd points, you know, like sort, of like, like sort of like, you know, what Norwich did like two years ago or something. Norwich under Daniel Farker is exactly how I see Burnley now. Kind of a, a nice, attractive, you know, a, a kind, a nice team, a, a kind of, you know, expansive, creative football team, but it's a soft touch. It's an easy touch. Like, you know that you just have to get stuck in on them and just be a bit physical with them. They will self-destruct. And that's what we've been doing. Against Palace at home, they were injury hit Palace. We had to beat them. And they had a good defence. But other than that, it wasn't a great team. Okay, for the Premier League, it's not a great team that they had for that game. And we were in the main control of that game. Palace, I don't think, did anything. But we gave them the ball, like, two times. And just gifted it to them. And then they won the game. Because it's the Premier League. These are good, high-level, elite footballers, right? And then West Ham was just even more embarrassing. That... 
we, again, were in control of the game. West Ham, massively injury hit, missing so many players. They didn't even look like they actually really wanted to win the game. They didn't look up for it. Really, they did not attack, I, I'm pretty sure, like, properly until, I think, the second that we scored. <laughs> Genuinely. But even though we weren't in control of these games, we didn't really create that much. It looked like we had more dominance onto it, but I don't really rem remember us making too many chances. Like, they just seemed like they were happy just to kind of sit deep, soak up pressure, and hit us on a, a set piece or a break. And that is something that's very easy to do against us because we commit players a lot. Not as bad as we used to, but it is still there, especially when we are so desperate to win games. And yeah, the West Ham game, when we were 1 0 up for how long? West Ham weren't good at all. And even West Ham fans can confirm that. And the way how we lost that game was just pathetic. It was embarrassing. Like, genuinely, when we scored our goal, and again, Jay Rodriguez penalty. Honestly, I, I, I didn't celebrate in the way that I used to. I It was more like pure relief. Like, I just took the loudest sigh. Like, the loudest, like, like just so much relief was in there. I didn't celebrate because I knew that we were going to mess it up. I knew that we were going to bottle it because we've done that so many times. I think we've lost now 14 points from winning positions. We've scored the first goal in many games this year, but we can never keep it. We can never hold on because... Again, it's an experience to manage games, to have the kind of the, the concentration for a full 90 minutes. You t you got to learn that all the time, and more of that team aren't used to it, more of that team aren't ready. And that's why I just think, if you sat company, I still don't think it solves it, because I don't think this team's good enough right now. I love Amduni, I love Kolyosho, I love Bayer, I love Bergen bound round the midfield, I think that's really good. Foster, of course, you can't forget Foster's a big miss, of course, he's out right now with his own troubles, and he takes as much time as he needs, but that is a big miss, obviously, as he is our main striker, who did score and create a lot for us early in the year. So, you know, we're missing our main number nine. I'm looking on to Sheffield United, and like, if I mean, just beating them is just more of a not being the worst team in the league, and for me, I mean, it gives us us like a bit of happiness and I just want to win a game I just want to win a game so um I hope you enjoyed my therapy session this is literally just because you guys won't stop talking about it and I may be the only Burnley fan that you know and you may just want to be wanting to see some Burnley fan have a mental breakdown so I'm happy that I gave that to you today um I try to be somewhat calm in it because in the grand scheme of things um uh, football is mad isn't it <laughs> So, yeah, um, tell me your thoughts down below, I guess. Um, Burnley for 20% off all Mozilla Design prints. Link down below, top description. And um, I got a video for Saturday. I got, I got a video for Sunday. So, I'll see you then. <sighs> £100 million spent. £100 million spent.